Okay, so my talk is about Dtrace, <clears throat> and I think it's a pretty great tool for debugging and profiling and other things that so, I'm going to get into. So first, I'm pretty sure I've like had beers of 90% of you, but in case you don't know me, I'm Sean, I go by StarTech, I'm a Boston professionally, and I work for Steven. So, this seems to be like the the closest thing to a one-line summary of Dtrace I can come up with. And you see I missed my mark by 50%, but, you know. So if you want to figure out what your computer's doing right now, you can use Dtrace. And that answer applies in several different ways. And so you may already have Dtrace and don't know it. It comes with uh, OS X and Solaris. And FreeBSD. And FreeBSD now, yeah. Actually, that's kind of a new thing, I think, isn't it? Not quite. Not quite? <laughs> it's newer than electricity. <laughs> so if you you have your laptops out, if you type iOS off and you get something like this, then you probably have Dtrace installed. You just type shit in, okay? <laughs> like, if you see something on the screen, you just type it in. If you type in iOS off and it says erase disk, what does that mean? <laughs> Do I just yes. put, put I think that means I win. <laughs> <laughs> How do I type it? What's that? Windows. Okay. So. <laughs> this is a very responsive talk. Make sure we're really close to park in the middle of the <laughs> you put your hands in your, you put your life in our hands when you. You just missed the trip to the hospital. You could have got free ride. Does it work on Windows? <laughs> you just missed it. Yeah, I'm already done. So you guys can just go to the next one. Continue the talk. So. I was waiting for the So as you'll know, as you'll notice, uh, Dtrace is fully supported by Solaris OS X and FreeBSD, which I do. And it has partial kind of crappy support on Linux. It varies based on the distribution. Oracle apparently or yeah, Oracle apparently published some kind of new distribution or whatever. And it has kind of crappy Dtrace support. But uh, Thankfully, no one uses Linux, so it's not really an issue. So Dtrace is both a profiler and a debugger. And because Dtrace is not Perl-specific, it works on different levels than something like NYT Prompt does. So instead of getting a really cool display of your code, you'll instead get a display of what's actually going on. And it's a kernel module. so. And it's actually, it needs its tendrils really deep into the kernel, so... Could you make that hand gesture again? Say again? Could you make that hand gesture again? <laughs> this is... <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot of work to get Dtrace support onto your operating system. But... Um, Linux doesn't have it yet because of licensing issues, I guess. And probably other... Linux is a software. Uh, Linux does have system tap, which is kind of like the trace for. You kind of need like a helmet to, to use it. And it's Red Hat. And Red Hat. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe you'll learn something from the stock anyway if you're using Linux. And a lot of people. Never mind. Nobody deploys to OS. So. So one of the prime tenets of Dtrace is that it's safe to use, even in production. So you have no unwanted side effects. Um, generally, Dtrace doesn't have side effects except for printing to your terminal, but you can also do some interesting stuff where you overwrite the room if you need to. And it's very low overhead. So if you activate a bunch of probes, then your server should still be serving requests pretty quickly. So it shouldn't. If you can use it in production, which you're probably using Linux, so you can't use it anyway. But if you can use it in production, it's a pretty handy tool. So, uh, 
T-Trace is both a high-level tool and a very low-level tool. So if, if your system is generating a lot of processes and they're cycling through really quickly, you might not be able to catch that with other tools. For example, Top might not show you that you're you're launching uh, like 10,000 zip processes a second or something. But um, Dtrace has has kind of a system level. Uh, it can figure out what you're doing on a system level. So one of the example scripts is pin per sec. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Talk to you. Oh. So every second it'll say how many PIDs are being created. So if I launch a new terminal, you'll see that caused 10 PIDs to occur. And if I say go high, since that's more than it's, that's my prompt actually. Four. Um, so if, if you try to fork bomb yourself, you'll probably see some interesting there's lots there. Can you demonstrate that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember how to, the, like six, whatever, whatever. Yeah, I'm not going to think of that. Roll uh, C, four, four, four. <laughs> okay, so everyone type this in with me. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very interactive talk. Good practice for being a system man, I'm not kill it. Yeah, I would not be able to handle that. Um, but if you do something like that with Perl fork wall fork, then top might not even show that something's weird because your system will be running at 100% CPU, but no one process is taking up more than a couple I don't know, milliseconds of. You wouldn't be able to run top. <laughs> you probably wouldn't be able to run Dtrace either, but be careful with those fork arms. Um, another script you might try is IOTOP. Which is sort of like top, except instead of measuring CPU time, it measures um, what's doing input and output. So if your disk is behaving slowly, you can kind of see what's going on. So I don't know what Keynote's doing stuff. My turn. Yeah. So if you don't have, I don't know, do you guys have something you use for measuring disk latency or whatever? Like, I don't know of any other tools that do this kind of thing. There is DSTAT, but it's not a D-trace tool. Okay. I just find your computer. Yeah. <laughs> this one ran out of PIDs, so... Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so those are both really high-level tools, um, but you also get very low-level tools, too. So d -trust is something you might be familiar with. Um, this is actually my introduction into Dtrace because OS X does not have S-Trace. Instead, it has Dtrace, which is basically the same thing, um, but better. Um, so it gives you all the system calls that happen and the results. That seems like not enough system calls, but I don't know what happened. Where all the calls? It's so much faster, but you definitely did. Syntax What is the syntax error? Oh wait, maybe it's bottom down. <coughs> That's interesting. You know what? This feature is things not going to pan out. <laughs> Sorry guys. It's the one in there somewhere? Yeah, I don't know what happened there, but... Uh, do you have Moose installed? Pretty sure I do. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> Dtrust is like S-Trace, so if you ever use that, pretty much the same way. Um, and then you can go even lower where you see things like the blocks of I.O. that come past the disk. So that's kind of like, it's very low level, but you can also get the very high level view too. And the thing I like most about Dtrace is it's very programmable. So instead of using those you know, six scripts I, sh I listed there, you can kind of customize exactly what you want to look at. So in this case we have um, invocation directly at Dtrace. So you start out by saying what events you want to listen for. So in this case, we have the syscall um, open 
that happens, and you want to um, get an event every time the function is called. And you can also um, filter out all the calls you don't care about, because on your system, you're going to have thousands of opens every second. So here we say, basically, this is doing a stir comp. So you're saying, if the arg0, which is the file name, if it has this string in it, then uh, do my action. And the action just prints some debugging information. So I wrote this to try to, to try to find when an application was opening it a SQLite database that I couldn't figure out. So, so we open it with SQLite and we see that we had the open syscall entered and SQLite 3 is the process that opened it. So you could probably do this specific thing with LSOF or something, but um, dtrace lets it gives you so much more power. So that's something I wrote because I actually needed it. And that was just a simple detrace thing. So the example probe I just gave you was when we enter the open syscall. But you can also probe on many other things. For example, any syscalls, but also Perl level function calls and returns. Um, I'm pretty sure most of the database engines, like MySQL, will give you uh, dtrace probes on SQL ex execution, so you can see things like, oh, I'm parsing the, the SQL statement, now I'm running it, etc. Thread events, signals, all sorts of stuff. And you can make your own too. We'll talk about that. So I gave this talk at YFC Asia, and I forgot to do the cool demo. And <laughs> this was my slide to tell me, don't do that shit anymore. Because it's a really <laughs> That's exactly right. So I'll kill that dtrace. Um, so I wrote, well, this is a pretty common example of how powerful dtrace is, but um, <coughs> so here we have a dtrace script. I don't know if you can read it, but it says whenever we enter the read syscall and the script is named GPG. Print out the first arguments to. Excuse me. Yes. It would be more visible if they were higher up on the screen. Oh, that's. Yes. Okay. Probably, I don't get yep. Sorry. No. Please, cool. if I can make this better, any better. So, I ran this dtrace script, and now I'm going to talk to GPG. So. Um, So I want to enter my passphrase. So I'll type in my passphrase. And you can see, I don't know if you can read it. Hi, OPW. So I just typed stuff in a D GPG. And I was able to snoop on, in on that. And now so, we all know your password. Is that what we just saw? Yep. Yeah, my password, password is, is hi OPW, hello Corey. Yay. <laughs> I should probably use some capital letters or something. Yes, it was a period. The period. Or two dot. Two Maybe an exclamation point. Had a look. Mm -hmm. Um So that was just a very simple demo of the kind of power GPG could. Uh, sorry. Um, Dtrace. Dtrace, that's what I'm talking about. Dtrace could do. You can write key loggers. Yeah, I just did. That's all. So the key logger is just whenever we have a read system. So I don't know what GPG actually does to set up a prompt that can't be snooped on, but obviously if you have root level access with kernel support, um, dtrace can kind of get around anything that GPG will throw at it. So if you're using GPG, just be careful that someone might be snooping. <laughs> well, that's what you should never use GPG on your remote machine. Uh, Dtrace does require root level support, or root level privileges, so 
It's not like any old jerk can just sleep on the floor. Just any old jerk with pseudo. Or someone who can escalate privileges. With like an attacker? You know? Yeah. yeah. Um, so. I'm not just typing the same thing anymore. So here's another thing that I get. was every time uh, GPG calls read, print out a stack trace of the C stack. But because I didn't compile GPG with dash D, whatever, not really that useful. What are you going to do? I guess I could recompile GPG, but I'm not going to do that for this talk right now. Can you do that with brute? With what? Brute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just change some Ruby code. So GPG is also a profiler. It's not just a tool for um, espionage. <laughs> um, and while I love Deval NYT Prof, I think it's a great profiler and so much better than anything we had before. Um, there's more than one way to do it. And, and more than one line. <laughs> more than one line to write it. Um, I love your little cues to yourself. <laughs> you know, I gave this talk and I kind of blew through it because I didn't write myself notes for what to do. You know Keynote has speaker notes, right? I was just thinking that. <laughs> Not if you turn off your... Not if you turn off speaker notes. <laughs> <laughs> I've given a lot of talk with speaker notes, but I never look at them while I'm speaking. That's my fault. You're varying your screen, right? Yeah, I'm reading the screen because it's. Yeah. So we don't get to see the people. That'd be awesome. <laughs> you have to bring another monitor. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 Ye
you know, cheers, I got this laptop. <laughs> never. That's why you never respond. <laughs> I know you know what it means. <laughs> Have you read mail? <laughs> I hate PID providers. Okay, so right now I'm saying every time that the Perl process with this PID um, enters the intuit method function, which is a Perl, uh, Perl function that does some crazy hairy parsing, it's what kind of figures out what indirect object method calls uh, are doing. So every time Perl runs that function, I'll get some D-trace output. So I'm using Moose, and this will give me an idea of where in Perl code for Moose where it's, we're hitting that function call. So I don't know if we actually have any examples here. And that oh, here. Perl will D-trace probes, correct? No. No. Mm -hmm. This does not require a Perl build with DHH probes. I, I believe. It's when you get back to Perl level code out of that. We get Perl level code out of that because that's the first argument passed to Intuit method. It's like, okay. what's a parse next? Oh, it's that little. Yeah, we get the arguments to the to each C function. So if I go back to a regular Perl that I haven't built with D-trace support, <coughs> we should see okay. similar results. Yeah, so it works without D-trace support. So Perl itself has D-trace support. That's what gives you things like Perl function call and return as probes. But you don't need that for this, because D-trace can, can work on any program written in C, basically. Okay, we're doing it. So uh, Xcode, which is Apple's uh, Objective-C environment, uses D-Trace for its profiler. So instead of getting all sorts of crappy text, you can get nice visualizations, which actually look really crappy on this projector, but they look a little bit better on my monitor. Yeah, it is pretty nice. I never used it, but it makes for a good screenshot, I guess. <laughs> Um, and finally, last word about profiling. Someone tweeted this and I thought it was interesting. <laughs> An interesting uh, attack on D-Trace that sort of backfires. So one way to read this is just, I don't really want to figure out why apps are slow. And I feel like if you're a professional programmer, you should really uh, not, not reject tools just because they're too powerful. That's just my opinion. But. I'm happy to play this guy. Uh, so, as I keep saying, Dtrace is also a debugger. And I was using Dtrace to debug a Perl program. So I'm sure you've all used rt.cpanda.org. It's a website, or a web application, so it can run on Mod Perl. But it was failing its tests, probably because, as we talked about earlier, my computer is set to Japanese. So it's getting weird failures like this. So, so this actually says public key not found. But the weird thing is that string doesn't actually appear in Jap uh, RT's Japanese localization. So I thought maybe it's in being generated by GPG. So I got a copy of the GPG code, and I asked for it, and no results. That's because encodings are a piece of crap. So as soon as you use the right encoding that GPG uses for its, its Japanese text, then you find that that string does exist. So, now we know that um, GPG is producing the string in, in Japanese instead of English. So I was thinking maybe it's a dollar lang, dollar LCL, environment variable problem. So, so if we use LCL equals EM, we get an English prompt. If we use JA, we get a Japanese prompt. And the weird thing for me was if you use no value for LCL, you get a Japanese prompt. Which kind of baffled me. That was the cause of the bug. 
It must be getting it from somewhere else, then. That's exactly right. <laughs> How can we figure this out? We need features. Let's do it. What do you use? I don't know what I'm doing here. Okay. Um, let's go back to the slides, because those are safe. <laughs> Actually, I know. <laughs> so now I'm OpenStoop tells me all the files that are being opened on my system by any process. What is opening that? So something is opening .re.pl slash content slash. So if we go back to. I bet it's your show. Which you could do there. Oh, you know what I did? Because I switched Windows, it's too much. So we get all these files opened by GPG. And if you look closely, I don't see it. But basically, <laughs> you know, lots of <laughs> can't trust. Basically what was going on was GPG was opening a file in my home directory that Apple sets up to tell what, what language programs should use. And because that's an Apple specific thing and I'm probably the only one using a MacBook, I was the only one. The only one using a MacBook that wasn't set to English. I was the only one who caught this bug. And I used uh, Dtrace more effectively than just now to uh, figure out what was going on. So without Dtrace, I would have had to add print statements to GPG itself to figure out what's going on, because I'm a printf debugger. Yeah. I use printf debugger. I guess that's better way to say that. Um, then after I added the print statements, I had to compile it, install it, then kind of, you know, goof around a little bit more, because I don't know GPG code. Who knows what's going on in there? So, you know, keep doing it, then clean up afterwards. Whereas instead with Dtrace, you know, it was just one one line in my shell. And then I see all the stuff that's going on in GPG. So if you like the Perl debugger, that's one thing. But um, the Perl debugger is not very great for debugging interactions between programs. Whereas Dtrace, you can see any time a program interacts with another one. For example, um, RT was talking to GPG. And there was a Dtrace lets me kind of debug that interaction. Whereas I don't think, I can't imagine any other tool that would do that effectively. <laughs> so Perl has Dtrace supports. Um, what this means is Perl lets you inspect every, every time there's a sub entry return. And in Newer pearls, you get a phase change probe as well. So if you know what uh, the global phase or variable is, it kind of maps to that. So Yeah, so the first colon delimits the provider, which might be something like Perl or syscall. The second one is module, which is not really used. The third one is um, function name, and the fourth one is probe name. And there you go. Um, so here we have. Uh, let's see. Too far. <laughs> so I have a phase change uh, probe that just says print out the first argument, which is the name of the phase that you just entered. So when we run Perl e1, you get the start phase change, which is basically the Perl interpreter start one. Then run, which is after compile time, after use statements of process. Then you have destruct, which is Perl's opinion. So you can limit um, your your probes to just match one of these phases. So for example, you might want to look at all the syscalls made during the struct time 
to kind of debug something. I don't know. Um, and there's plenty of other opportunities for adding more probes to Pro. For example, string eval might be interesting. So only look at particular events within the context of the string eval. And that might be useful for debugging error. And adding that was my first pro patch. It was very simple. There's also a Perl dtrace document that kind of describes Perl's dtrace support that I also wrote. And that's my talk. Thank you for paying attention. So I gave this talk in, in Japan, so I wrote uh, Japanese questions are okay too. And I felt like maybe it's it doesn't matter where I am. Hey, you just said Japanese is okay. Come on. There's no question in there. Context. Mm -hmm. So if you want my slides, you'll have to follow me on Twitter. <laughs> That's how it works. I already posted them, so if you just if you just look at them. One week per slide? Say again? One week per slide? <laughs> That's why the slides are so small. And 40 or less. Okay, any questions? Is Japanese really okay? I'm starting to wonder. It's a little bit much. You wouldn't have had to find that problem. So it doesn't run over there. Yeah, you know what? That's true. <laughs> if I just use English like everyone else, right. then I wouldn't have had to debug that RT issue. And I wouldn't have found Dtrace. And I wouldn't have had to give this talk, which I kind of hated doing. There you go. <laughs> we were here to support you. I appreciate it. We blew when are we going to start doing that? <laughs> so no questions? How, so how how long did it actually take to figure out just starting from scratch like the first time you had to use it in anger? How much fucking around did you honestly do? So the first time I used it was when I was debugging the environment Japanese or yeah. RT. And I spent about a day on it. And then someone's like, hey, you should try Dtrace. <laughs> and then I figured it out within like an hour. Okay. So it's very easy to get started. So for example, the um, the syscall thing. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because honestly, just sitting here in the audience looking at that command line, there's a whole lot of shit in there. That's true. Where does one acquire the knowledge of these incantations? So what I read was an online uh, HTML ebook type thing. Um, it's on the Oracle website now because uh, Dtrace was developed by Sun and then Oracle bought them. And then, yeah. So it's on the Oracle website now. There's also a book that I found to be incredibly unuseful. It's like a thousand pages, and it's just example after example, which is useful in some ways, but I kind of want to, like a guide to learn how to use Dtrace. Sure. There's also the Dtrace toolkit, which has tons of examples. That's a good point. Um, we can just ask you on Twitter, right? Yeah, I'll just ask you on Twitter, and I'll write you Dtrace scripts. Cool. Problem solved. Can you Dtrace Dtrace? <laughs> um, so let's look at all the syscalls that Dtrace makes. So is Dtrace a Perl module or no? It, has, it, it actually has nothing thing. to do with Perl, really. It, it's a system something that yeah. find an SBIN, I guess, or user SBIN. Yes, yeah, user SBIN Dtrace. So I don't think actually. Well, where are you going to Dtrace? Dtrace for not Dtrace something, and then you get Dtrace. Huh. Yeah, so Dtrace is looking at all the, yeah. So it's saying, oh, I'm writing to the terminal. Oh, I'm writing to the terminal. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fork bomb or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but you can see that it, it performed beautifully because Dtrace is very low overhead. So actually, one of the things that's cool about it is <laughs> when you're using Dtrace, when you compile something with Dtrace support, which is only when you need to do something like Perl level subroutine and entry, subroutine entry and exit. Um, it has to inject a little bit of code into the, the calling of Perl functions, but they're very clever over at what used to be some, and um, they made it so whenever there's 
a dtrace event compiled into code, by default it's all mops. So it's just the computer says, oh, I don't have to do anything, oh, I don't have to do anything, and continue on. And then when you turn on dtrace, it changes those um, assembly level instructions to be to call into the dtrace stuff. So when you have dtrace compiled into your Perl, there's a very low overhead. I think it's something like 10 to 15 percent. So Which for something, say again. So about as much as threads. Yeah. And um, and this is actually useful. That's <laughs> 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 uh, what you said. In any case, it's and pretty cool how it works. It, it's very smart compiler magic and kernel magic. Well, the cool kid operating systems have it. Yeah. So.